Hey there, everybody, it's Dakachan. Used to be formerly known as Amai. So, get the awkwardness out of the room first. Uh, it's just like a little rebranding that I did to just like truly reflect like who I am. Because uh, Amai, I just try to like be cutesy, like, oh, I like ooh, frilly, whatever. Uh, which is not really me uh, at all. <laughs> I just did that because I thought that's what people would want to see because that's what I thought entertainment had to be. Like I had to be happy all the time and sunshine and rainbows and be cutesy and it's just like not. So uh, and I didn't want to focus too much on cooking anymore because I bought a lot of weird shit that I didn't ever use uh, like uh, utensil wise and like weird kitchen gadgets and gizmos and like electronics that I didn't end up using. And uh, just the cost of like ingredients and stuff, it was just a little bit too much for me because I'm poor as fuck. So I couldn't keep doing that. And so everything just like started to stress me out. Like it, it was pretty much like having a second job was like trying to plan everything, uh, get everything together, buy all the stuff, and then uh, filming, editing, and then uh, recording the voiceover. It just took a lot of more time than I thought it was going to be. And I didn't want it to be this serious. Um, so it was just like uh, I needed to chill. I needed to think and regroup and what I wanted to do. And I just wanted it to be fun. I just wanted this to be like a fun little thing to like meet people and just have similar interests with. And it's just like just chit chat. And so it's just I started over, fresh start. So it's gonna be Daka Chan. Uh, I'm starting to do it properly. I'm gonna start uploading more frequently and regularly. Um, I've gotten all the social media stuff that you're supposed to have, so I've got the Instagram and the Twitter, and I've got a Twitch channel because I wanted to stream. I wanted to do video games because that's what I really like doing. I enjoy playing video games, but I didn't want to put like hour-long videos on here and just like have a bunch of games and like the playlists. So it's just like I'll do that there, and I'll post like on my Twitter. Uh, what time and what times and days I can stream on because uh, during the week uh, I work obviously so like after work I can get off and then I'll be like hey I'm off work uh, do you want to get together in an hour and just play the games and chit chat so I'll do that there uh, but yeah I'm gonna start doing it properly uh, just have a little bit of fun um, without further ado we're gonna talk about some books I've got here um, it was before the whole bandwagon thing started about the TV show, uh, but I read, cause I read, like, December of last year, uh, The Devil in the White City, and so after I was done with that, I was like, wow, that was really good, I enjoyed that, what's something similar, and so it was The Alienist, and then I got his second one, uh, The Angel of Darkness, by Caleb Carr and he's a really well he's a really great author he knows how to write well so that people it was like because it's really fast because he's also really smart and so he wants to because he's like a military historian or historian in general and he writes like a lot of political papers and stuff um, so he wanted to keep it like smart in a way because it kind of reads like a textbook sometimes because it talks about psychology and like different psychologists and what their theories are so that was really interesting and I enjoyed that aspect of it because Laszlo is a firm believer that everybody is pretty normal and then stuff in your life influences you and like traumas or stuff like that it's like cause and effect like no one's just born a madman and wants to just start killing people like that's just not a thing that or at least that's his theory that's not uh, the condition of the human like psyche. We don't, we're not born to kill people, and so that's sort of his uh, perspective on the psychology. Because it's just like a big old debate between all of them. It's like nature versus nurture and all that shit. But the story is in 1896, New York. It's pretty grimy. Uh, everything's corrupt, more or less. The police don't give a fuck about anything because they just take bribes from people, like brothels that are open illegally. They're like, oh yeah, you can run as long as you give us like a little stipend. Uh, bars and 
all the gangs are able to flourish because police just don't care. So when there's these series of murders that start happening, they're boys, they're young boys, uh, they're prostitutes, and they're poor immigrants. So it's just like the bottom of the bottom. So the police just don't want to investigate. They don't think it's a problem, especially because a lot of these people are immigrants from like uh, England and Ireland. So they're very religious. And so they are like, well, good. They're boy prostitutes. They're just kind of the scum of the earth and they don't, well, like we're not upset that they've, they've died. <laughs> um, so that's pretty scummy, pretty bad. But there's a new police commissioner. I didn't know that he was, but apparently Theodore Roosevelt was a police commissioner of New York City for a little bit, um, and he's trying to reform the reform the police department because he's obviously he's kind of like a boy scout. He's like he wants to do everything by the book. He's like law and order, where with the justice that needs to this this these murders are great injustice. We need to right them. So when all, when he says all this, the police officers are like, "Push, get off your high horse. We don't care." Um, so when the, he can't do the conventional route, he does uh, the unconventional. So he elicits the help of John Moore, who's a journalist for the New York Times, a Laszlo Chrysler, who's a psychologist, and Sarah Howard, who is a secretary. She's the first woman to be employed by the New York Police Department, but she's a secretary, and she has greater aspirations. She wants to be the first police officer and maybe the first detective in New York City. She was, she's like, she wasn't really uh, thought of to be on this like task force, but she's like, when she heard, when she heard wind of it, she's like, no, you're gonna put me on that task force, because uh, she's kind of got like something to prove. Because obviously in this time they're like, women can't be police officers what are you talking about they're too fragile so she's like no nah, get me on that case um and without spoiling too much they just like follow clues and try to piece together this man and what what made him this way and what made him this way was really horrible like they're starting to empathize with him a little and they're like wow this ki uh, the killer's like because they thought he was a monster. He's like, oh, you can't kill young men. Like, what's your, you're a monster. Because they also think that he's raping them, but he's not raping them. Um, because, uh, it's just like, he's a monster. But then afterwards, they're just like, no. He's just had a lot of trauma in his life, and he's trying to work out why these things happened to him. And he doesn't know how to handle it. Uh, so he just, <laughs> he, He's got a, he's just a weird coping mechanism, if you could put it that way. <laughs> um, but the, the conclusion is kind of, uh, it was very, it was cut short to me, I feel like, because uh, when they try to catch him, things don't work out the way, and you're not able to learn anything. Um, which is really upsets Laszlo, because he's like, I want to prove my theory. Uh, so can can I get to talk to this guy? And the police officers are like, nope, we want him dead. <laughs> so we're gonna shoot on sight, more or less. Um, but it's really it's really great because oh, I also forgot because they also bring up um, there's these two police officers or detectives, uh, Marcus and Lucius Isaacson, and they're more uh, progressive about like forensic science and whatnot. So like, there's also these chapters where they, they just talk about like fingerprints and like trying to sample or match blood together and like ballistics and all this stuff. And it's really cool and interesting to read. Um, so it was just like it was really it was really easy to read because he writes it in a fashion that's easy to digest, uh, which is um, it's hard to do that with, especially with stuff that's so technical. So. Uh, Alienist was really great. That's why I was upset with the, the show because like um, they the plot's kind of the same. Like there's a murder in New York City, you gotta find him, blah blah blah. But like they changed the characters so much. Like um, Laszlo is like a really lovable character in this. Like he's he's stern, but like you just you love him because he's just like he's just a wholesome person like he loves working with kids 
like he's um he has a the Laz or the Chrysler Institute where he tries to uh, help kids who've come from like traumatic uh, households, and he's just like he's just a really wholesome good guy, and everybody knows that, and he's just like you can't help but love him, but in the show, he's kind of like a, a Sherlock Holmes character where he's kind of like I'm smart, I know it, and it's just like I'm just kind of a jerk, and everybody kind of dislikes him because he's like he's very uppity but he's just like we have to we have to handle you because like you're smart and we you know stuff that we don't and it's like the team dynamic is so much better in the book than in the show um so that was my little uh if about it and sarah howard in the show was just like they just had her like in her dressing room most of the scenes with like just her corset on and like getting dressed and it's like she's like a really great woman character and you're just like having her just like with her tits out and it's just like stop <laughs> but that's just Hollywood being Hollywood I guess I can I shouldn't have really expected much from it it was an okay show it was enjoyable but like the book is ten times better so if read the book definitely uh, before the show um and then angel of darkness is the same thing there's a a killer around she's uh, but it's a she so it's different in that aspect in that there's this stigma around women that they're like you're only you're only a mother or a wet nurse or like a governess so like taking care of children in general like you're not really a woman until you've born a child um, and you've taken care of them and just that sort of a very old-timey thinking and so when a woman starts killing kids everyone's like what no -uh, that's not true it has to be a man it's clearly a man you're just framing this woman because you have some weird because it's a in this one, Laszlo comes under a lot of scrutiny because he's like, no, it's a woman. And everyone's like, I think you're kind of a fraud. Like, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to, you're trying, because they're like, this is society. You can't just change society. Like, this is the, the fundamentals of what, because like, if women aren't good, then nothing's good in the world because they're mothers. They gave us life. How can a person that gave us life possibly take life, especially from someone that they gave it to? Because she kills her kids. Um, <laughs> um, and that was the first charge that she tries to bring it up. Like, she killed her kids. Um, but it's just like, no. So it was really interesting to read that, part, that aspect of this because it's like, it's a... Especially Sarah, like, reading Sarah's parts in this, she's like, no, women are definitely capable of doing anything that a man can do, like, because it also goes back to the thing before, like, like it's trauma and society that breeds these sorts of, uh, these occurrences, and it's just like, you're not just born a woman and then you're just magically this magical being that's strong enough to withstand any trauma and like if you're if you get beat by your husband then you're obviously gonna stay strong and be this pure great being it's like no women are people if you beat us we're gonna get fucking upset and we might end up killing our husband like it's not that uh, far of a stretch <laughs> but it's like um it's interesting because in this so she's been told that all her life, like, you need to be a mother, a mother, a mother. You need to provide for a child, provide for a child, provide for a child. So when she ends up having a child, especially because she doesn't want a child, she just wants to, like, uh, she's, she just likes dating men and just, like, being casual and, like, oh, I'm just, like, everybody likes me. Uh, but her mother is like, yeah, no, you need to stop doing this. You need to find one that you like. Just, like, you don't even have to like them. Just find one stay with that one, uh, marry him, and have his kids. And so she's, like, forced into this, uh, role. And so she has a child. She's very begrudging about it. She's like, I don't want this fucking kid. But then she does, she has to try to care for it, and she can't. Like, she's, uh, she can't breastfeed. And so she's just, like, and just, like, all this pressure on her, it, like, kind of, breaks something in there and so she's like I can't provide for this kid so and it's so needy it won't stop crying because I can't feed it and it's just like it's just very overwhelming to her and she just 
kills it. <laughs> and she killed her husband, and then she just moves on. Uh, she's kind of like a black widow in a way, where she just, like, she kind of has a family, and then, like, once the family gets too needy, she just drops it, kills it, and then moves on to the next one. It's a really interesting character. Um, but it's, uh, it's just a great read again. Uh, and it's just uh, a lot of the... Because this one has to do with more of a... Because they try to... Um, they can't catch her doing current stuff, so they need to go back in her history and try to find stuff and try to uh, charge her on that. And so, it, like, it goes back to the more forensic stuff where it's like, we need to dig up the body. And everyone's like, no, we don't dig up bodies anymore. Or we don't dig up bodies in general because, like, uh, the whole religious thing, like, you can't touch dead bodies. That's just not cool. But they're like, nope. So they end up, <laughs> they end up going in the middle of the night and digging up his grave uh, without permission. Um, and they find stuff and they, uh, do all the cool forensic stuff and they try to match ballistics in a gun or because uh, they were trying to find a bullet they couldn't find a bullet so they were they dug up the body and found one and trying to match it into a gun that's been like in a watery pit it was in a well uh, so it's moldy and they're like we can't get a fixture like just cool forensic stuff that's like I can't really explain because I don't really know forensics all that much but it's just like it was just really cool uh, I really enjoy Caleb Carr and his writing style. I really liked the Laszlo character. I was hoping that there was a longer series and not just two books, but unfortunately, he's moved on. Um, so I'll definitely find other stuff that he's written, and I would definitely recommend those two. Uh, and the next one is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. Yeah, she's Korean. Uh, and I haven't really read any, like, Korean fiction. So I was like, I'll pick it up. And it's called The Vegetarian, and I'm like, I'm a vegetarian. What the fuck you gotta say about vegetarians? <laughs> so, um, it's really, uh, it's a weird concept. And that's why it's won the Man Booker Prize, because it's, like, very original, uh, concept. Because, uh, sh it's a woman. She has a dream, weird dreams about like blood and meat and gore and just awful, uh, just gross dreams. And so she wakes up and she's like, I'm not eating meat anymore. And in the traditional family structure that they have, uh, she cooks all the meals in the house. And so the husband is like, no, I want meat. I eat meat. You can't stop cooking me meat. And she's like, no, I'm going to stop eating meat. And she just ends up like kind of ends up not eating much of anything and so she just like, starts withering away and um her husband starts getting fed up with her because she he doesn't understand her plight at all he's not willing to understand he doesn't want to talk to her about anything he's just kind of like she's driving me crazy um so she he goes to her family and is like you need a your daughter's acting like a crazy person you need to take care of her. I'm not taking care of her. And so the family, like, in lieu of trying to, like, because he was talking, he's talking about divorce. And he's like, no, no, no. That's, a, it'll stain our family. So, like, we're trying to keep this together. So they hold this weird intervention at her, their family house and try to, like, shove meat in her face. And she's just, like, uh, it escalates crazy. They're yelling at each other, talking crazy, blah, blah, blah. And somehow she ends up, uh, cutting her wrists uh, with the kitchen knife and she ends up in an asylum um, and it's another like psychological thing because the way that they end up explaining it is that she's like uh, anorexic but it's also partnered with like schizophrenia because it's really strange because like there's this um she has this weird fascination with like flowers and so she thinks she's a tree at the closer closer to the end uh <laughs> like she just goes out in the back of the asylum and just like stands uh, doing a handstand for a really long time and she's just like i'm trying to grow into the earth and i want trees to, or flowers to start sprouting up out of my feet like uh, it's uh, interesting uh, it's unlike anything i've ever read before um and if you're not uh it's got weird sex stuff in it. If you're 
uh, if that's not your thing, then I wouldn't recommend picking this up. But other than that, it's really, really good. Um, it's very explicit. Like, I had to read this on the bus, and I was like, ooh, maybe I'll close that. <laughs> I'll read that when there's not, like, eyes looking at me. Because <laughs> uh, I just felt uncomfortable reading it out in public. I was like, ooh, but it's like how people must feel feel when they're reading like Shades of Grey or something. I don't know. I've never read that. I don't know how explicit it is, but like that's all I was, that's all I thought about. Um, but it was definitely interesting and I'd really like to look up more like Korean or South Korean literature because like if, uh, it's a very interesting writing style and I really enjoyed it. Like, um, I've read a lot of, uh, Japanese uh, literature and I enjoy that because it's very dark and gritty and, uh, so I'll have to check out more South Korean stuff. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I could do more. I've obviously read a lot more books in the time that I've <laughs> done this last, but it could go on forever, and I definitely don't want to have for you guys to just sit through all that shit. So I'm going to end it now. Um, remember, I'm going to do a little Twitch thing later on today. And uh, if you guys want to keep up with what I can do during the week, then definitely check out the Twitter. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.